Good morning, y'all. I'm Tracy, and welcome to Just Dig It Farms. Jean and I took a little break, and we did a little traveling, and went to see our sons and daughter-in-laws and grandbabies, and we've been gone from the farm for a little while. We come home to some surprises in the potager garden. Some good, some not so good. Any time that we get to spend with our children is the best. And we had a wonderful time. We started out and we went down to Florida for a few days to spend a few days with our youngest son, Chance, and daughter-in-law, Renee, and grandbaby, Cooper. And we went to the zoo and we went swimming and we just had a good time. And then we came home for a few days and got the farm in order. And then we jumped on a plane and we flew up to New Hampshire to see our oldest son, Chase, and daughter-in-law, Kaylani, and grandchildren, Kiana and Jordan, and our new grandbaby will be here in October or maybe the end of September. So we wanted to go up and spend a little time with them, and we had a wonderful time. We did a lot of fun things, and we just got to spend time with them, hang out with them, we helped put baby furniture together and get things set up for our new granddaughter, Ella. And Jean and I checked something off of our bucket list. Jean has been to New Hampshire before on a business trip. And when he went, he had a free day. So he rented a car and he drove up to the White Mountains and he hiked Mount Washington in September when there's risk of severe snowstorms crazy he's just crazy he took off up the mountain with just a backpack of water and a few apples and when he got to the top the lady was chewing him out she was like don't you know how dangerous this is people die on this mountain all the time and he had to take the bus back down the mountain but anyway he said it was an adventure of a lifetime gene is a very outdoorsman very adventurous and he said it was an adventure of a lifetime and he's always wanted to take me there to hike the mountain as well we love hiking together it's one of our things that we just love to do we've always loved to do it so we took one day while we were in new hampshire all by ourselves and we drove to the white mountains and we hiked mount washington now i didn't make it to the top on a hike i have graves disease and my heart was starting to race and I was getting shaky and I was getting weak and I just couldn't make the whole hike. So we came back down the mountain and we drove up to the summit of Mount Washington and the drive was pretty incredible as well. It was an amazing experience. It was beautiful. And now I have a determination and a goal to get this Graves disease in remission and I'm working really hard on it and be able to hike, make the hike all the way up to Mount Washington. I have that goal and I'm working on getting myself physically able to do that. It was incredible. If you've been following us for very long, y'all know that we moved Jean's mom and dad down to our farm a few years ago now. We purchased a shed and we converted it into a tiny cabin for them. We filmed a good bit of the process. If you haven't seen those videos, I'll put links here for you in the description so you can go back and watch those. But they live here on the farm with us and it's such a blessing to be able to leave the farm and know that they're going to take care of our animals and water the things that need to be watered, harvest the things that need to be harvested and just look out for our property and look out for the farm such a blessing. We're so grateful and so thankful for them to be here. We're in central Alabama and we are in an area that is called the bottoms. And on the topography map, we're like in this dip, which means for some reason we never get rain here. It comes right up to us and either splits or stops and we hardly ever get rain here. So we have been like six weeks without rain 
and I just knew that when I got home from our trip, the garden was gonna be over because I had been having to water the okra and tomatoes, the perennials, the herbs, all the things that I am trying so desperately hard to keep alive. I've been having to water those like every day. And I just knew with us being gone that long, they were gonna die. And it's a lot to water, so I couldn't very well ask Pop and Mom to keep everything watered. The only area that I asked them to try to keep watered every day was right here. Because this is my gourd tunnel, and I've got okra on both sides, and then I've got my pumpkins planted. And I'm about to replant sunflowers right behind you here. And I really wanted this area to stay alive and be able to grow because I want to be able to pick these gourds for decorations. I want my grandbaby Cooper to be able to come and pick some pumpkins. And we're still picking okra. I'm still trying to fill my freezer with okra. And we're going to be doing a fall photo shoot here. So I wanted this area to remain alive. So we set up a sprinkler and we asked them just to turn it on for an hour or so every day and just keep this alive. So I just knew when I got home that everything else was just gonna be crispy fried, burned up and over with. But while we were gone, we had a blessing. It rained and it rained a good bit. So when we got home, everything was still alive. It was growing, it was doing really good and we had a lot to harvest. Now Jean's mom and dad did harvest the garden for us every day while we were gone and they got a lot and she was able to put some things up in her freezer as well, which I absolutely love that. I love being able to share from my garden. Not only is it a great joy to me to be able to produce all of this food and preserve it and put it up for Jean and I, but it's a much greater joy to be able to share it with my family. So we come home to a surprise of everything still being alive and actually doing better than when we left. This is my grape tunnel right here. I'm growing Foxy Lottie, Daytona, and Stover grapes. Those are three varieties that we can grow here in the South. They're Pierce disease resistant. They have seeds, but they'll make it without getting that disease that a lot of your grapes get. They'll make it here in the South. And we came home to the tunnel full of beautiful, plump, dark purple and blue grapes that are delicious. This is the first year that we have gotten a good harvest off of this grape tunnel. That was a big surprise to me to come home, walk under this grape tunnel, and it still be loaded and the grapes all be ripe the mockingbirds hadn't got to all of them, and they weren't all shriveled up because they hadn't got water. They were actually doing good, and they were actually tasting good. So we're gonna get these grapes harvested today. I'm gonna take them inside and wash them and sort them, put them up in vacuum seal bags in the freezer, and then we're gonna take a day later on, maybe this winter sometime or this fall, and Jean's mom is going to teach me how to make some grape jelly. I'm also going to be giving some to my friend Holly with Simply Johnson. She has a wonderful business where she makes jams and jellies and baked goods and sells them at farmer's markets. She's going to be at the Great Fall Garden Festival with us in September. And I'm going to give her some of these grapes so that she can make some grape jelly from our farm to have to sell for all of those who come out to see us and spend the day with us. She's also going to have a lot of other baked goods and jams and jellies and things with produce from our farm. We're also going to have some of our honey for sale, some soaps, some of our signature pottery coffee mugs, and maybe a couple of other items that I'm still working on. But if you are not signed up to participate in the Great Fall Garden Festival, please go check out our website 
it's the great fall garden festival.com i'll put a link in the description you can go there and see all of the list of youtubers and vendors and artisans and craftsmen that are going to be there it's going to be at petals from the past in jimison alabama a gorgeous nursery garden nursery and farm we also have a great lineup of homesteading classes we've got some kid classes that will be taking place and it's going to be an absolutely awesome day and we're hoping to see as many of you out there as we can we'd love to meet you hang out with you and spend the day with you so go over to our website thegreatfallgardenfestival.com you can get all of your information there the event is free of charge it doesn't cost to get in but we are asking that you register just so we have a good head count of how many people are coming so that we can make good accommodations for everyone but if you're wanting to attend any of the classes it is mandatory that you register for those because there's limited space available for the classes but please go to our website thegreatfallgardenfestival.com. Check it out. Register if you can come. And we look forward to seeing y'all there. So to my surprise, I have a lot of grapes to harvest today. Now, not all surprises were good surprises when we got home. We did have a visitor come to the garden. An unwanted, unwelcomed visitor came to the garden. And I'm a little upset about that. These are my sweet potatoes. We had a deer and we still have a deer that is visiting the potage garden every night and it must be like at 2 a.m 3 a.m something like that because we don't see it out here so it's having a buffet on my sweet potatoes all of my peas and my fruit trees this is one of my apples and you can see where it's been eating on my apple tree which is not good because then it's hard to get it to grow in the right form so the deer's been getting my apple trees and my pear trees we built another section of the potage garden fence right here earlier this spring but we have not completed it and we still have this whole side to build and the back side to connect into what we had done last year. This is a big garden space, y'all. And we added this new addition this year, this market garden here where the pumpkins and the gourds and the okra are. And fencing is very expensive. So we're having to just do a section, save our pennies and do another section eventually we will get the fence around the whole entire potage garden so we can't fault the deer it's our fault because we don't have protection around the garden so i'm hoping that this fall or maybe towards the end of this summer we're going to be able to start on the next section of the potage fence like i said we just build a section save some money build another section and eventually the vision will be fulfilled and the garden will be fully protected from any outside wildlife. Today, I'm going to put some Malorganite fertilizer on the fruit trees all down that fruit berm and hope that I can deter the deer from there and I can salvage my fruit trees because that it would be a big loss. Fruit trees are very expensive and it takes three to four years before they actually will produce fruit. So that would be a big loss if we lose those fruit trees. If you don't know about Malorganite, it's an organic fertilizer. It's actually made from human sludge, which is kind of nasty, I know, but it's a good fertilizer for your fruit trees and the deer do not like it. So it's a really good thing to use to help fertilize your trees and hopefully keep the deer away. 
So that deer visit to my garden was a not so good surprise to come home to. Okay, y'all, let's harvest these beautiful, yummy grapes. This mockingbird has a nest intertwined in the grapevine, and I am stressing her out right now. She keeps coming back and forth, checking on her babies, and I'm just really stressing her out. Before, when I've been out here looking at the grapes, she actually has dived at my head. They're very aggressive and very protective of their babies. So I'm trying to tell her that it's okay. I'm not gonna hurt her babies. But I'm just going to work here really quickly, get these grapes harvested, and move on so she can tend her babies and not be so stressed. While editing this video, instead of putting music to this while I'm working, I really wanted to just leave it silent and let you hear what I hear when I'm working in the garden. Nature's song. All of the nature sounds and all of the farm sounds. This is blue butterfly pea, and I harvest it every day. I get a handful of blooms off of each one of my plants every day, and I'm just taking these in the house and drying them so that I can have them to make tea or some fun Kool-Aid for my grandbaby and enjoying some fresh tea. Although I truly love everything about the garden, this is probably one of my most favorite things to do in the garden, is to harvest herbs, to dry them, preserve them, create herbal products out of them and medicines, 
and right now I am harvesting herbs every morning. I'm harvesting something different every morning. This is feverfew that is finally ready to be harvested. So I'm going to be drying some and also using some fresh to create a feverfew tincture, which is really good as a pain reliever. Despite the drought and the heat, this has been our most productive garden ever here on our farm. Every day, I'm picking something out of the garden. I'm harvesting herbs, I'm picking tomatoes, okra, peas, peppers, something every day out of the garden. I'm preserving a lot, I'm doing a lot of canning, freezing, dehydrating, fermenting, and we're sharing a lot with family. I feel rich. When Gene got home, I got him to help me get the grapes that was at the top of the tunnel that I couldn't reach. Incredible, edible grape. You know, it's just such a joy to grow your own vegetables and fruit. It really is. It is. Especially when you go to the grocery store and see how much it costs now nows a days. Yeah. Ooh, mercy. Because we were yesterday at a store, a big warehouse type store, grocery shopping last night. Costco. And, yeah, Costco. And just a little bitty thing of raspberries and grapes was outrageous. And when you can come out here, yeah, you water it, yeah, you tend it, but it's just such satisfaction. And tastes good. Yes.
We harvest our honey twice a year. We harvest it the end of May and either the end of July or the 1st of August. And the rest of the honey we leave for the bees as their food stores to get through the winter. So we harvested our honey in May, Memorial Day weekend, and we just kept it in five gallon buckets. I had to order the honey bottles and the labels and the lids, and we just got them in. So today I'm washing 321 one pound plastic honey bottles. When the bottles are completely dry, then we will be bottling all of the honey and putting labels on them. Jean's company supports our farm and they always buy at the first harvest, they purchase all of the honey from us and it goes to the salesmen of the company who in turn give honey to the clients, to their clients versus giving clients a pen or a hat, they give them a jar of our honey. And it has our label on it, and it says compliments of Jean's company. So it's a really good deal, and we're very, very appreciative of his company's support of our farm. Now our next harvest of honey, which will be the end of this month or the 1st of August, will all be for sale to all of you and our family and our friends. We have been working on developing our online store through our website and we're hoping to have our honey for sale on our new online store at our website just to get farms.com this fall. Thank y'all so much for hanging out with me today. God bless you. God bless our country. And I will see y'all next week.